Okay. So I was telling you about uh, day two, which is about research about the PhD. Okay. This is research about the PhD. PhD research. What is it to do research in the context of the PhD? Okay, what is it? Um, day three, we were about experimental research. Experimental research. Day four, we see more about statistics. And also we see more about qualitative research. Qualitative research. And finally on day five, we see about correlational research and surveys. Correlational research and surveys. Okay, so this is what we are going to do, or to be doing, during the course of this week. Now, um, now let me first offer a definition of research, since, since, we, are, uh, since we are there. I want to briefly introduce... Uh, Okay, uh, here we go. I'm going to show you an example. We're going to start with this. Okay, so I think it's someone there. So what is the definition of research? Well, the definition of research is rather simple. Research is a critical process for asking and attempting to answer questions about the world. Now, what should you remember in there? What are the key words in this statement? Will you tell me what they are? Well, the first one I would consider a key word is critical. We're going to see the importance of critical thinking. What does it mean to be a critical thinker? You have to be very critical when you do research. If you're not, well, you're not really a researcher. Okay. Um, what else should you know also? Well, questions. That's another one. Question. As a researcher, you are supposed to ask and attempt to answer questions. Okay. Now, um, see, one of my colleagues used to say, when you're doing a master's degree, or before, you learn how to answer questions that other people designed for you. What is the answer to this? Ah, you answer. Now, when you become a PhD student, you learn how to ask questions. You are asking the questions. Then you answer them. Okay. So that will require from you, uh, I would call it a considerable level of maturity. Okay. Something that was never required of you in the past. In the sense that you are supposed to come up with the questions, not just the answers, the questions. And then, well, you may try to answer those questions. Okay. So those, I would say, are probably the, the most important keywords. Okay, so critical process, critical thinking, and asking questions. Then if you combine those two, well, you're supposed to be doing research. So all research is about the collection of data, of data. But this is not the sole aim. Okay. First of all, facts are not data. Now, what is a fact, by the way? Often I like to ask questions to students, what is a fact? Could you offer a simple definition of a fact? Well, let me offer you a simple definition. A fact is something true. There's a notion of truth. Well, data is more raw than a fact. A fact, there's a notion of truth behind, which is something that we humans deal with. Data is just information. It could be defined in information theory by many indicators. Okay, so facts is something true. Now, all research is about the collection of data, but we are going to see how this is done in the context of the PhD, of course. Um, now, facts do not speak for themselves. When people say they do, they are omitting to mention essential background theory or assumptions they are making. Now, assumptions, that's another key word. When you do research, you are making a lot of assumptions. We are going to see what are assumptions. 
before. But first, I want to show you that we have a tendency to make assumptions. And this is something that is not dangerous, but that is uh, something you, you should fight against in some ways. Uh, a sudden crash, I want you to take a look at this example here. A sudden crash brings us running to the kitchen. The accused is crouched in front of us, eyes wide and fearful. His hands are red and sticky. A knife lies on the floor. So according to you, what's going on right here? What are we witnessing? Any idea? A knife. Hands are red and sticky. Accused. Uh, any idea? The drop, the jar of jam. Uh, you saw the, you saw the end, Leo. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, usually people, when I show this, they think of a crime scene. Most of you have seen all those shows on TV where, now in France, I don't even turn on TV anymore, but each time I turn on TV, they have those crime scenes everywhere and experts and whatever. And so basically, we've been pretty much conditioned to, to see all sorts, of, um, all sorts of things in there. And most people would assume that, um, would assume that um, a crime scene, but actually, if you look at the rest, let me, if, you look the re if you look at the rest, if you read the rest, you will see that this is not really a crime scene. It's not really a crime scene. We are more witnessing something that is quite common. So does a jam jar and its spit contents. The accused was about to lick his tiny fingers. Now, what do we imagine now? We imagine that it's just a kid. It's not a crime scene after all. It's just a kid been playing with a jam jar, and he probably dropped it in the process. Now, is that true? Well, we don't know. Maybe the kid was there, and the cat did it. Or well, it was an earthquake. We know nothing, in fact, really. Okay? But each time uh, we, we, we are presenting with, we are presented with data, we make sense of it. We constantly process them. We cannot help it. Okay? It's difficult for us to suspend our judgment. We constantly make assumptions, constantly try to, in fact, constantly try to predict and try to understand is the way we've been wired. Okay, so this is something that, as a researcher, you have to question. Our permanent, uh, I would say, um, not a compulsion, but our permanent uh, tendency or drive to assume, try to find the answer, try to grasp the situation. Most of the time, we don't have enough information to find out. This is the point. Okay. That's why you first need to collect data. That's something we see in the process. Um, now perhaps we constantly, uh, we constantly assume a lot beyond the present data in order to explain it. Now facts are data interpreted through theory. I want to introduce now uh, some keywords that you will find all over the place. Now, of course, there is a book for this class. There are, there are several. There are two of them that I've recommended. The first one is called Business Research Methods. Maybe you have it already. Some of you, we have the book called the Business Research Methods. Now, if you don't, get, get a copy of it, because this is a book that is required for the class. Okay, now, everything I say here, in one, way, in one way or another, is to be found in the textbook. Now, of course, you're not supposed to read the textbook from page one to page, uh, sorry, from page one to page 555. It's going to be far too long, okay? A textbook is more reference so you say, oh, okay, you said something about uh, uh, experiments. You open the book at the end, the glossary, look for the word experiment, and then well, you look at the corresponding pages in the textbook. Okay, don't read it from page 1 to page 555. Oh, you could try to do that, but uh, well, yeah, the book is here, Business Research Methods. Now, by the time you, you finish, you, well, neither, more than three years will have elapsed, and uh, it's really time to finish your PhD. Or you will have fallen asleep way before that. And uh, of course, except even me, I know this. Uh, and uh, it's my specialty. Lately, I've, I've read a few research methodology books. And even for me, after a while, some of the things get tired. So, you know, it's like, uh, now, um, of course, I know the material. So I don't have to read uh, in detail. But I have to force myself to actually read. Because also, I think I know, which is even harder. The professors are the hardest people to teach to. Because we think we know. So it's hard for us to learn from others. We are so used to teaching that after a while we, 
No way. We don't learn from others. And actually, everything we don't learn from ourselves, we have a tendency to question. And at least that's my case. So that's something that I have to fight uh, a little bit. Uh, let me continue, continue with, with this. So uh, there are a few things. Uh, facts are data interpreted through theory. Uh, we're going to see what they mean. Or phenomena available to anyone. Uh, OK, that's an important sentence. Phenomena available to anyone who knows how to observe them. Uh, how to observe them. Now, there is a, here behind this sentence is the idea of objectivity. Objectivity, if everybody can see it, well, I'm not sure it's around there, but it's probably better than if only one person can see it. Okay. Objectivity can be opposed to subjectivity. Well, I think this is true because uh, that's the way I see it. You know. I had a dream the other night, and in my dream, uh, things were happening. So this is true. Yeah. Well, this is called subjectivity. Okay. Objectivity is basically many people have to, have to see the same thing in order for things to be established. So that's another one. Alors, facts, I've already told you what a fact, what a fact is. Data, or well, data is more related to the idea of information. Okay. Information is something more neutral. You know, for instance, uh, I get information from the classroom. Right here, my eyes get information from you. And uh, I absorb information. So a very important word is empirical. In research, you will see that word everywhere, the word empirical. Now, what does that mean, empirical? Well, empirical originally means information obtained through our senses, with as little preconception as possible. Okay. We get information from, from outside. And then, well, we have to, see, that's what I've told you. We almost always interpret information immediately. Data are interpreted through our learned prejudices, stereotypes, general ideas, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, how do you go around there and get information in as neutral a way as possible. How do you how do you do that? Well, there is something called the empirical method. Okay. Empirical means originally obtained from the senses. You see, you hear, you smell, you uh, all the five senses. Um, there are two stages. First, gathering of data directly through our external senses with no preconceptions as to how it is ordered or what explains it. As I've told you, this is difficult, very difficult. We have a tendency always to, first, when we go to collect data, we are going to collect things we are interested in. So we have a tendency to, a very common thing is we have a tendency to look for the things we are looking for and to overlook, overlook the things that contradict that do not match what we're looking for. Okay. So it's very easy to build theories. You just take anything that will go your way, and all the rest you discard. And there, you have something. Now, this is the first thing you have to fight against. You have to fight against the tendency to only gather, only look for what you have. So the tendency we all, I, mean, I personally suffer from that a lot. And uh, at least I'm aware of it. But most of you, you're probably suffering from that more than I do, and you're not aware of it. So that's why I'm, I'm telling you about this. Okay. Um, okay. Our second second step. Once you've gathered all those data, they come to you. Well, what do you do with them? Well, I, I'm telling you about this. This is a general introduction to research because it's something that you will see everywhere, in the PhD, in papers, in everything you do in the future. Two things will be will be present. So I'm laying the ground here for all what's coming. Uh, now two. I'm talking about the empirical method. Induction of patterns and relationships with the data. Induction means to move from individual observation to statements of general patterns, sometimes called laws. Okay. So what is this idea of induction? How does it work? Well, induction is a process of going from the specific to the general. Okay. For instance, I've worked on several projects where uh, earned value management was used. And what I've witnessed, I've witnessed that in each of those cases, those projects worked very well. That's what I've witnessed. Now, induction, I generalize, maybe this is because the use of earned value management make all those projects successful. 
I've moved from several instances I've observed to a general principle. 